This is James Brower. He lives in British Columbia, Canada. He's a collector of records, photographs, vintage picture frames. All sorts of visual imagery and ephemera. He also collects postcards. They're in these boxes. And I'm sort of obsessive about this in my collecting. <laughs> I like that sort of visual arrangement of sameness repeating itself in different contexts. It could be anything from a figure standing in front of a mountain and, and you see another one with a figure standing in a mountain and a figure standing in front of a field and pretty soon you start collecting onlooker postcards. The onlookers are cool, but this story isn't about them. It's about a type of image James didn't even realize he was collecting at first. But I think when I got home and started more and more going through my collection and putting images together, that I'm like, you just see it. It's the same sky in Alberta, Canada, Redlands, California, and Juarez, Mexico. I think what grabs in my mind is a part of the cloud at the very far end looks like a little mouth of a, of a creature. It's something your brain grabs onto. Once you see it, the images suddenly take on a sort of uncanny quality. So why would someone go through all the trouble to make these places look the same? This story started back in January, when Estelle, she produces Vox Earworm and has made some of your favorite Vox videos, sent me a link on Slack. Anyway, if you ever want to do a dark room on postcards, this one is cool. It's the same stock sky on every postcard. It brought me to this Flickr page, and I sent a message asking about the same sky postcards. I met James over Zoom. I have them grouped with that little bit of cloud facing the other direction. Sometimes they shift it a little bit, so that distinctive cloud formation is sometimes a bit off to the left or a bit off to the right. Sometimes it hugs the top of the frame. Sometimes it's more in the middle of the frame. There's actually a couple of sky photos that get repeated with slight position shifts in James's collection. And it's pretty clear that these skies were not part of the original photos. There's the one James says looks like a sea creature and one with a cloud that sort of reminds me of the shape of Cuba, sort of. Anyway, once I started looking for those skies, I came across them pretty easily on eBay and in antique stores in Brooklyn. I began building my own small collection of same skies, but I wanted to go see James's original collection. So it was at this point that I got on a plane to beautiful British Columbia. Damn. So yeah, then I just started scanning them, cropping them, putting them up on Flickr, and now I think there's about 11,000 of them uploaded. So there's advertising, old age homes, windows, wax museums. There's some really strange wax museums that are nicely preserved in postcards and probably nowhere else. The bulk of James's collection are what's known as Chrome era postcards. So a chrome card denotes a particular period of postcard production, post-war, from the late 40s through to the present, essentially, with glossy color photographs, and it takes its name from Kodachrome. Kodachrome was the first commercially viable full-color film, introduced by Kodak in 1935. These types of postcards, taken with color film, circulated widely in North America in the 1940s through the 1970s, with branding on the back like plastic chrome, luster chrome, things like that, always with that word chrome, to note the shine and the gloss that you see on these postcards and the, the punchy color. By the time James started collecting in the 1980s, the glossy mid-century chrome cards were just piled up in flea markets, largely overlooked. The post-war cards were considered more junky, something easy to collect for the cheap, and so I'm like, sure, I'll grab that, looks cool, looks cool, looks cool. And pretty soon I'd amassed a lot of it. And I don't think I ever noticed at the time that I was grabbing the cards that had the exact same sky repeated in different contexts. There's a few things we know about the same sky postcards, namely that they all came from the same place. It appears that these same sky postcards are all from one publishing company, Dexter Press. Dexter Press was one of the largest postcard manufacturers in the world during the Chrome era. And looking into their history provides a clue about the same sky postcards. It was founded by this guy, Thomas A. Dexter, 
in Pearl River, New York. And according to the back of this postcard from National Postcard Week 86, Dexter was printing 4 million cards a day at their peak and pioneered the so-called natural color printing process. Natural color referred to a mechanical process of printing postcards from color photographs. So it might be that this particular publishing company had some reason to do it. It might be that it had a lot of visual punch, this white and the blue. Maybe they thought that enlivened the image. Or it might have something to do with the company's other innovation. Dexter patented a process called gang printing, which upped their printing capacity and enabled them to take on print orders from smaller postcard publishers. Maybe they thought it was some strange way of marking Dexter Press's visual territory, like a little signature of sorts that no one would notice. And I'm gonna be honest, that's the explanation I was hoping we'd end up with, that this was sort of a trademark that Dexter would slide in to make it a Dexter image. Do you think that's a possibility? No. After talking to James, I called Bill Burton. He's the publisher of the online magazine Postcard History, and I sent over two Same Sky postcards to ask him what he thinks. And his explanation made a lot of sense. Dexter was the go-to guy to print Chrome postcards. He had very large presses, and he could print them at very high speeds. He had a big art department. He would offer to photo correct any problems in the image. So if the sky, for whatever reason, didn't look the way a customer wanted it to... The artist would cut out a mask that would go right up the telephone pole and across it and down and go along the roof line or whatever it was. Then you would put the sky behind it and you'd match the two of them up. These two cards have the same image in the sky because they had stock images of skies. And most people wouldn't have known the difference. I mean, who goes to a store, buys three postcards, and then grabs a magnifying glass and looks at what they got? Nobody. Well, there is one person. And I still collect them, and I still love them, and I still am a champion of the Chrome Arrow postcard. <laughs> Dexter Press is long gone, and there's really no way to know for sure why they replaced some skies and seemingly left others untouched. But they probably never anticipated that somebody, someday, would put them all together. To me, it's not so much the grand mystery of why they did it, because I think visually it creates something really remarkable. These cards that are meant to denote a particular place, like Grand Teton, Wyoming, or McLeod Lake, British Columbia. When taken en masse, the differences get washed away and you get this sort of typology or this type that floats above the particulars beneath. And these images, which are often pretty bland on their own, transform into something new. And it's very obvious, say, with the same sky pictures, you've got a, 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 something arbitrary, like an amalgamation of clouds. They start repeating and gaining a strange significance just by virtue of being repeated. It makes the, the card not just what it is, it becomes something else. James mentioned a couple of figures from the art world that inspired the look of his collection, including pop artist Andy Warhol, whose wall of Campbell's soup cans and colorful portraits of the rich and famous you might recognize. And two conceptual artists I didn't know about, but I'm glad I do now, Bernd and Hilla Becker, who photographed industrial architecture in Western Europe starting in the 1950s. Their whole thing was about form and sequencing too. And the beautiful way they were arranged so that the type of imagery would repeat with small differences in between. And just the visual impact of that was incredible. So I sort of wanted to reproduce that. There's a link to James's full collection online in the description of this video. Plus a couple of links that I found helpful if you want to do some postcard research of your own. Thanks for watching.